it's easy to miss on a map. Roughly the size of Maryland, Burundi is one of Africa's smallest countries. It used to be the third poorest in the world. Now it's number one. The average person here lives on less than a dollar a day. In 2013, American Jason Fader moved his wife, Heather, and their two kids to Burundi to serve as a missionary doctor in this remote valley. Kibuye Hospital is about three hours outside the capital city. Uh, between here and there, there is no surgeon. The, the majority, all except for me, of the surgeons in Burundi work in the capital city. And for a population of 10 million people, there are only 13 surgeons, with Fader becoming number 14. And on a typical day, how many surgeries uh, are you doing? Uh, I schedule one or two, and we end up doing 10. Like many other missionaries here, he raises his own support. It would be difficult to find a place in the US where I could have even a, a smidgen of the impact that one surgeon can have here in the middle of Africa. There's two million people out there that, are, that have no surgeon, and I'm happy to be here to help care for them. Half of Burundi has no access to portable water. Some 70% of the nation lives below the poverty line. There's no health care to speak of. So as you can imagine, this small Christian hospital here in a remote corner of Burundi acts as a lifeline to tens of thousands of people. Rachel and Eric McLaughlin, Alyssa Feaster, and John and Jessica Cropsey joined the faders in Burundi as missionary doctors. On fait ça dix fois par jour. Pas de problem. John Cropsey is one of only three ophthalmologists here. The work we do is stressful. Um, you got cross-cultural conflict going on. You've got stressful work, limited resources. During dry season, we can have a as little as two hours or even sometimes no power uh, during the day. Lord God, I thank you for this chance to be here today. I pray that you would be with this woman and her baby. I pray for a safe delivery. In your name we pray, amen. Rachel McLaughlin is one of just 20 OBGYNs. Faith in Christ and the opportunity to help the less fortunate are just some of the reasons that compel these doctors to serve in less than ideal conditions. God has called us to this place. So he's called us to hard work, but he's called us to good work. And I think that we can see his redeeming story um, when we have the eyes to look for it. In addition to meeting physical and spiritual needs, Fader's team also trains a new generation to serve here. We thought the opportunity was really great to come to Burundi to disciple and train medical students and hopefully residents in the future in order to be physicians who can care compassionately for, for their people in Jesus' name and provide excellent health care. So here's an interesting angle to the story. Thousands of miles from the hospital all the way in downtown New York City, Mark Gerson, a Jewish businessman, has decided to personally get involved in helping these Christian medical missionaries change the destinies of some of Africa's poorest. The Torah, the Bible, tells us 36 times more than it tells us anything else to love the stranger. And who in the world is more of the stranger than the African poor in need of medical care? For several years, Gerson and his wife have given millions of dollars to support missionary doctors across Africa. It's been an honor and a privilege for my wife, who's a rabbi, and I, to partner with these, and I choose this term carefully, these sacred people these Christian medical missionaries who are sacrificing everything, go into environments that are completely forbidding, give up everything that we in the West consider necessities a lot of the time in order to fulfill their religious obligation to serve the poor. Gerson and longtime friend Dr. John Fielder, an American medical missionary serving in Kenya, co-founded African Mission Healthcare Foundation. Fielder says through his friendship, Gerson has seen firsthand the dedication of these missionary doctors. Medical missionaries tend to, to come for years or decades and, and stay and learn the language and learn the culture and develop deep relationships in their communities. Last month, Gerson presented the first ever Laheim Prize for Outstanding Christian Medical Missionary Service 
to Dr. Jason Fader and his team. So when I first saw that this prize was from a Jewish entrepreneur, I certainly did a double take. But Fader knew there was more to Gerson than just his generosity. He sees the care for the poor, the care for the stranger as part of his faith tradition, and I have a lot of respect for that. Fielder says a prize of this magnitude to one African hospital is far-reaching. The Laheim Prize uh, will provide a half a million dollars to Kibuye Hope Hospital in Burundi, which will help it to complete a new surgical building, start an internship, uh, the first in the country for medical school graduates, to renovate a laboratory, and to help about 350 people walk again with orthopedic supplies. Gerson insists there's no one better who delivers a higher return on investment than medical missionaries serving in Africa. As an example, he points to what Dr. Fader and his team did at the hospital in 2015. He enabled 35,000 inpatient, now patient, patient visits. He enabled 1,200 surgeries, and he enabled 800 cataract operations, all for half a million dollars. Fader says Gerson's generous gift will continue to touch and heal the lives of countless people across this nation. It's amazing how much you can do with so little. You know, we're not doing laparoscopic esophagectomies, but we are helping people walk. We are saving lives at the rate of sometimes thousands per year. George Thomas, CBN News, Burundi.